with the uh, popularity of The Mummy Returns and, of course, the success of the WWF, I'm sure you've been offered a lot of parts. How did you decide that The Scorpion King was going to be the first leading role that you did? We thought, number one, with the, the built-in audience of The Mummy Returns, that it was, it was a great idea, as well as the character of The Scorpion King is just such a, a, a profound, larger-than-life character, very similar to The Rock. So it kind of... Uh, it's a perfect fit. Perfect fit, if you will. <laughs> now, everybody is saying that The Scorpion King is not a prequel or a sequel mm -hmm. to the Mummy series. So why don't you explain to everybody how it fits in with the whole Mummy story? Well, what The Scorpion King is, The Scorpion King is not a prequel or a sequel. You're right. It's a spin-off with the, in, in the Mummy series. Within the Mummy series, we had The Mummy, of course, and The Mummy Returns, and The Scorpion King is a movie based on the character of The Scorpion King and how he actually became a king. You know, everybody talks about your association with the WWF and how you must be doing all of your stunts in this movie because you're used to doing them on a daily basis with the WWF. So what are you doing for this movie? Are you going, wait a minute, I'm the star on this movie. Can I sit back and let the stunt guys <laughs> do the work? Or are you doing it? No, I'm definitely not doing that. I'm proud to say I'm doing all of my own stunts. You know, the audiences uh, today, they're very aware of, of what's going on. They're very aware of, of camera tricks and cutaways and they're very, a very savvy audience. So it was important to me that they knew that I was, I was doing all of my own stunts only because I felt that I can physically do them. So as we're talking about stunts, have you felt like you've gotten beat up on the set at all, more so than in the WWF? Well, <laughs> um, you know, I'll tell you, the, the fantastic thing about the film industry is, is a lot of times, you know, everything is props and, and everything is scored in, in terms of, you know, the breakaways and, you know, in the WWF, uh, the metal chairs are real metal chairs, as I can attest to that. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the ring posts are real steel posts, uh, you know, nothing is breakaway or anything like that. So, as I've always told, you know, those, uh, some of my WWF uh, teammates, they, they'd have a ball in the film industry. Mm. but. Um, I've heard my share of, of bumps and bruises and you know we're dealing with with staffs and we're dealing with swords and the swords are real they're real aluminum so they're hard and at times I mean there was one particular shot in the film where myself and Memnon actually clashed together our metal swords and and they literally shatter um, and it was that was unscripted and we had metal swords going everywhere and things like that so it definitely gets dangerous. How about being on the set of a movie compared to doing your WWF stint? Well, in comparing the two, obviously uh, th there's um, a lot more time uh, and detail goes into a movie set and, and a certain scene of a movie because you have to, uh, you know, reset the lighting and reset the angles and, uh, you know, you owe this perspective and then you owe that point of view and, uh, you know, and then a big master shot. Whereas in the WWF, you have one take only and if your match is, say, slotted for 20, 30 minutes, you get one take, 20, 30 minutes, you go out there and you do your thing. And you rely on your instincts. You rely on your ability to listen to the people, the live audience. Um, and, uh, you know, whereas here in film, obviously I rely on the direction of the director and, and uh, the chemistry I have with, with my, uh, my fellow actors and, and everybody else on the set. And, you know, it's, it's great because it's, it's, it's such a larger scale um, than any live show on television that I've been a part of.